Everyone, all right, so I wanted to put together a video today in relation to uh, efficiency. There are four types of efficiency that you need to know. Let's begin with the static efficiencies, which tend to be more commonly examined, and you probably will use them more often in your exam. So the first type of efficiency that you need to be aware of is productive efficiency. And think about the name productive. The clue is who is it to do with it? Is it the consumer or the producer? Well, productive producer. Now, what the producers want to do is they want to minimize their costs, which means that they must be operating at the lowest point on their AC curve. Think about what occurs at the bottom of the AC curve. Well, you're, you're MES, and at that point, you have fully tapped into your economies of scale. So if I just draw it out very quickly, think about it. If I now reach the point where I am at the lowest point on my AC curve, so let's say somewhere like that, I cannot tap into any more economies of scale than what I've tapped into at this moment in time. To give you kind of some context, imagine that you're, the, you're a supermarket like Tesco. You now bulk buy in such large quantities that you get the very lowest price for, let's say, your bananas per unit that you can get. Even if you were to bulk buy more than that, the farmer cannot give you a lower price or they're not willing to give you a lower price per unit than what you're currently getting. So let's say hypothetically you're getting each banana by for like 3p, hypothetically, yeah? And that means that you are now productively efficient. Now, where does productive efficiency occur? Where on the diagram do we see it? Well, we know that one of the rules that you need to always show but never prove is that when MC and AC intersect one another, it must be the lowest point. So we can just draw that out. So if I draw the MC curve like this, well, the point where they cross over each other, can you guys see that that is the lowest point on the AC curve? Therefore, productive efficiency, if we put that down over here, is MC, marginal cost, is equal to average cost. So that's productive efficiency. You're productively efficient, you have fully tapped into the economies of scale available to you, and you are now operating at the lowest point on your AC curve. So that's productive. The one that causes a bit more confusion, I think, is allocative efficiency. So let's work it out in terms of where it is, but importantly, actually, is when you can use it in an exam, being able to spot it on a diagram. So that's actually the most important thing. So let's start. Allocative efficiency is where you are producing at the level of output where the price is equal to marginal cost, so P equals MC. But even though I want you to write that up in words, I actually think that's a bit confusing. Price is always derived, and if you're not sure why, please watch my step-by-step -step in terms of how to construct the diagrams. Where you got from the quantity to you hit which curve to get the price, well, it's AR. Therefore, price equals marginal cost is the same as saying AR equals MC. Okay, so for the sake of consistency, let's go MC equals AR. Right, there are two things about this. We know that allocative efficiency is to do with the consumer. We want to maximize consumer welfare. Hence, if we want to maximize consumer welfare, we operate where MC equals AR. Part of the logic, but even then, to be honest, it's more important that you understand how to use it and where to spot it on a diagram. But the idea is, is that if it's costing me, let's say, £10 to produce an extra chair, and if I sold it to you for £10, do you guys agree that that is the lowest price that I could have sold it to you without making the loss on that individual chair? In other words, your welfare as a consumer is being maximized. Even then, still find it relatively confusing. So I want you to understand it in this way. From now on, whenever the consumer is better off, I don't care why they're better off, because they're getting a lower price, a better quality, they could be smiling more. In the exam, I want you to say that allocative efficiency is rising. Now to emphasize and stress how often you can use this in an exam, in the June 2013 paper, Unit 3, they had a really horrible extract. It was about egg farming. And it was something to do with how like the egg farming, like the regulation that you changed and the hens no longer could be caged. So the hens were like roaming around having the best time. Yeah. If you don't believe me, go and check out the question. Question 9C in June 2013. On the mark scheme, I swear to you, it says happier hens lay better quality eggs. Therefore, allocative efficiency is rising. I don't know about you. If I'm sat in an exam, talking about how happy the hen is, I am not happy. I am very desperate at that point. And yet it was on the mark scheme. The point then is whenever the consumer is better off, allocative efficiency is rising. I know that might seem really confusing. Just remember it, always apply it, easy peasy marks. But you do need to be able to spot it on a diagram. We'll do some questions together on this in a moment. Firstly, I wanna take you through a little exam hack though. So let's remind ourselves of one of the market structures. Again, if you're not sure why this is what it is, please look at my video for perfect competition. But perfect competition, Let's say a firm is operating in the short run in perfect competition. So what we should know is that two things. One is they're a price taker. And number two, the second thing we know is that they could be making super normal profit or losses. So let's draw a perfectly competitive firm really quickly, like over here, rough, making super normal profit. So if I quickly draw it here, cost less revenue. All right, step one, as always, 
just do it. Here's the MC curve. Step two is MR equals AR because they're in perfect competition. So it's the D. Step three is the quantity is here, Q1. And this is the price P1. And now I'm going to make them make super non-profit. So I'm going to pick one like here. And I'm going to flick out. Again, if anything that I was doing just there was alien to you, you need to watch that video to know how to draw step by step these diagrams. Yeah. So this is C1. Okay. So the firm is currently making super non-profit of basically this area over here. Okay. Right. Question number one, you guys can pause the video and attempt it yourself and then compare it to my answer. Question number one is, is this firm productively efficient? Well, the answer is no, they're not, because productive efficiency occurs at the bottom of the AC curve where MC and AC intersect there, right? That is not the level of output that this firm is producing. So they're not productively efficient. Is that firm allocatively efficient though? Well, yes, they are because MC equals AR. Can you see MC equals AR is right there. Is that the output level we're producing? Yes, it is. So. A firm and perfect competition is allocatively efficient, but productively inefficient. Okay, let's carry on. And you'll see why this is important in a second. So now let's do it in the long run. So what you should know is that in the long run in perfect competition, firms can only ever make normal profits. Nothing else is going to happen. This firm is going to enter the market if there's super normal profits. So we get this. So this MR equals AR. And that's equal to D. That's profit maximization over here. Q1. That's P1. And if they're making normal profit, it must be right at that point there. Okay. That's not the most beautiful diagram in the world, but it will do. Right. Question number one. Is that firm productively efficient? Well, this time the answer is yes, because the bottom of the AC curve, MC equals AC, that's the output we're producing. Is that firm allocatively efficient? Once again, the answer is yes, because MC equals AR right there. Yeah. Hence the same level of output. You see that diagram at the bottom is the only time ever, ever, ever where a firm will be both productively and allocatively efficient, it will never happen again. It only occurs in long-run perfect competition. Now, listen really carefully to my wording because it's very important. When a firm is maximizing profit, so just to emphasize that is a very specific level of output, they're operating basically where MC equals MR. So when a firm is maximizing profit, they will never be productively nor allocatively efficient in any market structure outside of perfect competition. Never. Monopolistic competition, oligopoly, monopoly, never, ever. The only time they are productively and allocatively efficient is in the long run in perfect competition. And in the short run, they're allocatively efficient, but they're not productively efficient. The reason why this is important to know and recognize is because you can sometimes get multiple choice questions where you can give me the answer in two seconds. So I'm going to show you actually from past papers. I'm going to just stop showing this and share on the expert your website and make a bit more sense of this. So, our papers, A-level economics, go to Edexcel, right, and it's questions by topic, theme three. Okay, right, so, I think we have a booklet for efficiency, actually, yeah, there we go. So sometimes what they'll do is they will ask you about, you know, efficiency outside of perfect competition, and you should instantly now know what the answer is. It'll take you like five seconds to find the answer, so, Let's just get it to load. Let's have a look. Okay, not this, because this actually was, I want to show you ones where it's really quick. Ah, here we go, right. So what it says is this. A firm selling snack food at a music festival is operating in market conditions of monopolistic competition. Okay, so not about competition. It is likely to be instantly, immediately. I need you to understand that they cannot be productively efficient. They cannot be allocatively efficient. Not in the short run, not in the long run, not in no run. The answer immediately is D, neither, immediately, yeah? So straight away, you need to recognize that, right? A profit maximizing firm will produ produce a productively and allocatively efficient level of output in which of the following market conditions? We just worked it out. It only ever happens in one scenario, perfect competition in the long run, and so on and so forth, yeah? Uh, here you go, another one. A firm in long run equilibrium under monopolistic competition will be never, never productively, never allocatively, it's neither, yeah? So it's, where is it? Uh, Oh, it's in a way because it's inefficient this time. So C, yeah? Productively and allocatively inefficient. Okay, just accept it, know it, be able to use it. Yeah, right. So that is our starting point in terms of efficiencies. But I want to just make sure that this makes sense with one more question. And it's from a question I suspect you've never seen before because it's not just old spec, it's old, old spec. We're going back in time, people. So we're going to go and look at one of my favorite questions they have ever set. So, all right, hopefully you can see the screen clearly enough. Let me just make it a bit bigger. And that screen it. Okay, right. And let's do let's do single page. 
All right, question number four. Okay, hopefully you guys, this is clear enough for you. Let me zoom in a little bit, but I don't wanna lose all of the options. It says, the diagram, let me zoom out a little bit. The diagram shows different possible price and output combinations for a firm. Which of the following is true, right? This is excellent revision. Because in the process of answering this, I don't want us to just answer it and get the question right. That's too basic for us. I want us to not only answer it, but to go through every single option that's incorrect and prove why it's wrong theoretically. This is great revision. So let's do it. It's a good idea to pause the video, by the way, and attempt it yourself first. Let's do it together. It says, A, the revenue maximizing level of output, right? Underline the word output, because it's really important to recognize that it's asking about output and not price is less than the profit maximizing level of output. Okay, let's see. Well, we know that revenue maximization is where MR equals zero. So the output level for revenue max is Q2. And profit maximization, you should know, is where MC equals MR. MC equals MR is right there. It's Q1. Is that true or false? Well, clearly that is false. So it's not A. And we proved that it's not A through theory. We're going to skip to C. We'll come back to B in a second. Now it says the sales maximization price. So again, be careful is greater than the revenue maximization, and again, price. Okay, to get any price, the first thing you need to actually work out is the output. You need to determine what the quantity is, and once you know the quantity, you simply go up from that quantity to hit the AR curve, and that will always be the price, by the way. So let's start. Sales maximization, you should know, is where AC equals AR. So you see AC equals AR is there, it's a Q5. Therefore, as soon as I go up from Q5 until I hit the AR curve, that will be the price. So I go up, hit it there, the price is P5. Cool, right, that's sales maximizing price. It says it's greater than the revenue maximizing price. Let's see, revenue maximization is a quantity we know is MR equals zero, it's Q2. So I got from Q2 until I hit the demand curve, AR. Hits it there, the price is P2. Is C true or false? C is false. But if you had misread that, and if you had read it as sales maximization output, that would have been true. Because the output Q5 is greater than the output Q2, but that this time said the price, so be careful. Underline keywords, don't fall for the little traps. We're gonna skip D and come back to it. We're gonna do E. Demand is price inelastic at the revenue maximization level of output, right? I really like this one. One of the things that you should know is that demand, the elasticity changes along the demand curve at certain points. And one of the points is the midpoint. At the midpoint of the demand curve, it is always unit elastic, always. And then above it, this because the price rises above that point, it's elastic and below it's inelastic. I'll try and create a video on this another day, but for now, what do we know about the relationship between AR and MR? Well, AR and MR are always half the slope of one another outside of perfect competition, yeah? In other words, wherever MR intersects the x-axis, so over here, or Q2, I know it doesn't really look like it on their diagram, it doesn't matter, theoretically, it must be the case. If I got from that point where Q2 is, that point there must be the midpoint of the demand curve 100% in theory. In other words, it's neither elastic nor inelastic, it is unit elastic at that level of output. Hence, E is incorrect. It's not elastic or inelastic. It's unit elastic. So it's not E. That leaves us with two options, B and D. Let's start with D. D says, only normal profits are achieved if the firm operates at the productively efficient level of output. Okay. So let's remind ourselves of what the rule is for productive efficiency. Productive efficiency, the producer, is wanting to operate at the lowest point on the AC curve. That is where MC equals AC. Okay, so if I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna annotate to make it a bit easier for us to see this. If I just get my pen out, here we go, right. So can you see that MC, AC equals MC at Q3? Yeah, so we're operating at Q3 over here, yeah? And the thing is, is that once you know the output level, you can tell me everything about a diagram. You can tell me the price by going up to the AR curve. You can tell me the cost by going up to the AC curve. Let's see. First thing is the price. I go up from Q3 until I hit the demand curve, there. The price they're charging then is P3, agreed? The second thing I do is go back to the quantity. That's my guiding point. I go up from Q3 until I hit the AC curve. It's it there. So go across from that point. I'll try and do this something on my mouse. Apologies, it's really, really wonky. But then that's a straight line. I'm going to call that, C you know what I'll do as a text. Let me write it up. I'm going to call that C3, yeah? Okay, right. What do you notice? What's higher, the price P3 or the cost C3? Clearly the price is higher than the cost. Are they making normal profit? No. They are making super normal profit. Therefore, D is incorrect, which leaves us with one correct answer, which is B, but I'll go through that as well. But just in terms of the super normal profit area, by the way, it's P3 to C3 multiplied by the number of units they basically sell, which is Q3. So this area here, yeah? Okay, let's delete this. And 
let's do the option, which we now know is correct, yeah? It says, um, okay, so it says, supernormal profits are achieved if the firm conducts an allocatively efficient pricing policy. Okay, allocative efficiency is where MC equals AR, yeah? So you basically operate at the level of output over here, Q4. So we're operating at Q4. And remember what I said, get the price first by going up to the demand curve, AR, and then go get the cost by going up from that quantity to hit the AC curve. So what's the price? The price obviously is P4. What's the cost? Well, I got from P4 until I hit the AC curve. It's it. I mean, again, we're going to pretend this is a straight line. Everyone's going to be in awe of my ability to use the laptop mouse and be like, wow, so straight. And that's C4. And what do you notice? What you notice is that the price P4 is greater than the cost C4. Therefore, they are making super normal profit. The correct answer is B. But just before I end this video, I want to emphasize one thing. Because the statement I made earlier about how firms outside of perfect competition are never productively nor allocatively efficient when maximizing profit. Because can you see the profit maximizing level of output on this diagram? This is not obviously in perfect competition. Is Q1, that point there, MC equals MR. Is that point the allocatively efficient level of output? Well, no, it's not. It's Q4. Is it the productively efficient level of output? Well, no, it's not. That's Q3. In other words, when a firm is maximizing profits, they aren't productively nor allocatively efficient outside of perfect competition. That's not to say they can't make super normal profits, by the way. Like clearly we illustrated both in productive and allocative efficiency on this diagram, they made super normal profits, but they are not maximizing profits. In other words, they could have made more profits at the profit maximizing level of output. And hopefully now that makes efficiencies a lot clearer in terms of the two static efficiencies. Right, let's just wrap up. The very final thing is both the, the really easy, dynamic efficiency and X inefficiency. So let me reshare my screen over here. Okay, so a couple of things. Uh, the first is dynamic efficiency is really easy. Let's deal with that first. Dynamic efficiency doesn't have like a set rule, but essentially whenever a firm is investing its profits into like new technology, into research and development and innovating, you're gonna say they become more dynamically efficient. That's it, yeah, always. Just remember their firm's profits are rising or if they have high profits because they're a monopoly, you can say, oh look, they're dynamically efficient because they're innovating and coming up with like better quality goods. Blah, 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 yeah? So that's dynamic. The last one is X inefficiency and it tends to occur in a monopoly. Because a monopoly, there's a lack of competition. And because of a lack of competition, firms can easily become very complacent and lazy. And so they start to un incur unnecessary costs, costs that really they didn't need to incur, but there's just no competition, so they're not really that bothered. So here's an AC curve, like this. Now I'm gonna pick a random quantity, it could be any output. So let's say this is the output level the firm is producing. Do you guys agree that the cost should be where it hits the AC curve? C1, I'm gonna call that point A, yeah? But because of organizational slack, basically they start to become really complacent and lazy and like, you know, they're not very good. What ends up really happening is they actually incur a cost up here somewhere, C2, and they are therefore X inefficient by this distance. This is the X inefficiency that's taking place, okay? X represents a number, by the way. You will not realistically need to calculate a number. It'll be very obvious if it is given to you, but essentially you just explain it in theoretical terms. But a lack of competition can very easily lead to complacency where a firm is no longer even operating on its AC curve. It is therefore X inefficient. And that hopefully wraps up efficiencies. If I were you guys, I would do the paper one, June 2022, 25 marker about Tesla and whether they are efficient. Okay, hopefully that gives you a lot of things to basically speak about, especially things like, you know, economies of scale for productive efficiency. A massive firm can tap into vast economies of scale, like, you know, Tesla are able to bulk buy their steel and the batteries in such large quantities that the cost per unit is far lower for them. They're therefore operating closer to the MES and therefore productive efficiency and so on and so forth. You guys can work out hopefully on the basis of this what else to do but hopefully that was helpful.